Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at a related rates problem. In this one we've got a 13 foot ladder is leaning against a house. So it's always good to draw a diagram with these problems. So I'm going to start off with that as I'm reading it. There's my 13 foot ladder. When its base starts to slide away, so the base is moving that way, by the time the base is 12 feet from the house, the base is moving at a rate of 5 feet per second. At what rate is the angle theta between the ladder and the ground changing at that moment? So between the ladder and the ground, that means our theta is right there. When we do these problems, we like to set up our information in three categories. The given information, what we're trying to find, and the equation that relates those two things. Now when I say given information, I'm talking about the given rate because related rates problems always involve with changing rates. What rate am I given? Well, the base sliding away at five feet per second, but we need to put that in good calculus. So let's label this X and Y, get it on a coordinate axis, help us understand things. So this rate, it's as X is moving away, as X is getting bigger over time. So we like to say DX, DT, to use good calculus notation. So that equals five. And what are we trying to find? I'm trying to find how this angle right here is changing because you can notice as the ladder slides away, that angle is going to get smaller and smaller. And with good notation, I want to know how theta changes over time. d theta dt equals, and at what specific moment are we trying to figure that out? When x equals 12, when the base of the ladder is 12 feet away from the house. That d theta dt is changing. As the ladder is close up to the building, something like that, theta is bigger and the rate at which it's changing is slower. But as the base slides away, it's falling quicker and quicker and theta is changing, getting smaller at a faster pace. So that rate d theta dt is changing, but we want to know at exactly the point when the base is 12 feet from the house. And the equation that relates those two. You are looking for an equation that relates the two variables x and theta, and it's got to make sense in the context of your problem. Well, we have a right triangle here. I'm dealing with an angle in one side of the triangle, so I'm going to think some type of trig function should relate these. And if I'm looking at this, x is my adjacent, and I don't know why, but I do know 13. So I would suggest using x and 13, which would be the adjacent and the hypotenuse, meaning the related equation would be cosine theta equal to x over 13. Now notice I can put 13, I don't have to put z or something, because 13 is a constant. The length of the ladder never changes, so I can put the number directly in. It is not something that varies. Whereas for x, I do have to put that in. Because even though I'm going to pause it at 12, overall in the problem, x changes. It's not always 12. So if there's any variation to something, you have to put the variable. Okay, now with these problems, once we get our equation, we're then ready to do our calculus. I want to take the derivative of this. I want to take the derivative so that I find dx dt, that I find d theta dt. I want those to pop up in my equation. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t of both sides. So I write d dt. On the left side, it's going to be negative sine theta times d theta dt. So remember, because this variable does not match up with this variable, it's implicit. So I did the derivative of the outside function, derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. And then I derivative of the inner which is d theta dt. Now on the other side, that's just 1 13 times the derivative of x, which again, it's implicit dx dt. Now that I've taken my derivative, I can plug in the information I know. So we go in and we plug in negative sine theta, which is, oh, I don't know. I don't know what sine theta is. So I'm gonna return to my diagram and use it to help me find sine theta. Well, we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's y over 13. 
but uh uh-oh, I don't know why. That's okay. This is a right triangle. I know two of the side lengths, 13 and 12, so I can use Pythagorean theorem to find what y is. Now do notice at this point I can plug in x equals 12. That's because I have now taken my derivative, so I'm now freezing it at this moment. I'm freezing it at the moment when x is 12. So we get 144 plus y squared equals 169. So y squared equals 25, which means y is equal to 5. So sine theta is equal to 5 over 13. And I can plug that in. So a negative 5 over 13 times d theta dt, which is what we're trying to figure out, equals 1 13th. dx dt is 5 according to what they told us. I have negative 5 thirteenths times d theta dt equals 5 thirteenths. I'm going to multiply both sides by 13 over negative 5 so that this cancels out on the left side. And then multiply by 13 over negative 5 over here. And we have d theta dt equals negative 1. And we got to put our units on this. So it's as my angle is changing and we're dealing with radians. In calculus, you are dealing with radians unless otherwise specified. So I have negative 1 radians per second. And that would be my units. And that is how fast the angle is changing or decreasing. And it makes sense because the angle is getting smaller. So it makes sense that we have a negative rate.